Hey, it's Carly with Launch Code. In this video, we're going to be wiring up a SQL database into our Coding Events application. We're just going to be doing the setup um, for now. So the first step is to actually create that database. I'm in my SQL Workbench, and I have my SQL Server up and running. So I'm going to click on this instance. And I'm going to create a new schema and then create a user for that schema. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here, the one that looks like um, like a big canister or a couple of disks on top of each other. And I'm going to call my database coding events. Hit apply. And then I just have, oh, I see I capitalized one of the eyes. I don't know how I managed to do that. But we'll hit apply, and then this confirmation window where I saw that spelling error, this is just um, showing me what the actual SQL command uh, that's running is going to do to create the table, or create the database. And then I will hit close. So now we've created the schema. Uh, we want to create a user to actually interact with that guy. I'm going to hit add account, and we recommend that you create um, a single user and database per application and that you also just name your user that's going to have all rights for the database that you name that user the same name as the database itself um, which will just help keep things on track for you what there are a couple of other settings that you want to um, take care of when creating the user one is that you want to allow um, you want to allow any host at you want to allow localhost essentially and that's it this this might change for applications that you plan to make in the future um, anything that you're going to plan in a production environment or um, deploy yourself but just for for the application that we're working on into in class now localhost is fine it, it won't go anywhere except for on our own machines and then you'll want to set a password for yourself and uh, this can be something simple um, security isn't majorly important here again because this is only going to be um, used for practice on your computer so i'm gonna i'm gonna give a password of learn to code with the capital l number two and an exclamation point and i'll confirm that here And um, you don't have to create the same password as I do here, but um, I'll show it to you in a minute so you can see what that looks like. And hit apply. Oh, well, I guess let's try that again. All right. So uh, now I've created that new user, now I need to set its privileges. So I want to um, say add entry over here and select the coding event schema, hit OK. And then I want to select all of these privileges so this user can do really anything within the database. And then we hit apply. Okay, so that's it for um, what we need to do for the setup on the SQL side of things, or at least in the, in the workbench. Now we want to head back into our Visual Studio environment and um, wire some things up. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is, um, is add, the, add an object to this appsettings.json file to actually create that connection. Um, and define it. And that's just going to be another um, property. And I don't have that syntax memorized, so I'm just going to go and grab it um, from, the, from the textbook. So we have this written out for you guys too, and you guys can feel free to copy it as well. So I'm just going to copy this line, which defines what the connection string should be and what that connection is. And we just add it to the end of this app settings JSON file. Um, you might have opened this before. Maybe this is the first time that you're seeing it. It's just a, a place to house some information about some configurations for your application. I'm going to save that before I forget. Um, 
well, actually, we do have to make one change before we save officially, which is, so this defines the connection to that database that we just created, um, includes, including the user um, who we gave all those permissions to. We need to change this password to be the actual password that we created, which is learn to code. So now you see what my password is. So just a note on security, again, um, your password that you choose for your for this database or any other that you choose in this class for something that you're going to be saving to your um, to a Git repository and then pushing up to your GitHub profile. Just know that that in in this file or in this context, um, this password is not hidden. It's not encrypted in any way. So um, it is publicly available information. This is not a good practice to do um, long term or or with any any um, application that you will be um, doing more than just practice on, you definitely don't wanna push up your passwords. So um, I guess two things to note for now. Number one, um, choose a, a simple password here that, that doesn't look anything like, um, or isn't a replica of any password that you would use anyplace else because it will be exposed. Um, and then to know that you know if you if you do choose to um, continue to use this application framework and, and connect, or to connect to a SQL database in this way, that you do have options for um, sort of hiding this uh, password value from your GitHub repository with, with things like path variables and whatnot. Um, but that's sort of beyond the scope of, of what we're teaching here. So I'm going to save this now that I uh, actually have my real password value. So that's what we need to do to um, define the connection itself. And then to take advantage of um, the, the mapper that, um, well, the entity framework that we talk about in the text to, to create these relational objects, we want to add some more dependencies to our application. So if you remember from the, the tooling section, and, and we also used some NuGet packages when we, um, when we were creating unit tests, we want to um, open up that NuGet packet, package manager again so that we can pull something down. So I just right clicked on my project and I'm going to go to manage NuGet packages. And for me, um, this, this item is is pulled up first because it's a uh, something I've recently used, but that might not be the case for you. But you, what you do want to look for is pomelo .entity framework core mysql, and if it's not uh, front and center for you, like it is for me, you can always search for it over here. But this is what I want, so I'm going to select it and hit add package, um, and I'm going to say yes, I'm okay with all of these licenses. So remember, NuGet packages are are external libraries or or um, uh, bundles of code that that we can take that we can use inside of our application um, and we know now that that has been added to our um, to our application environment via a few checks I guess so number one um, we have this this sort of status bar on the top of our IDE that kind of gives us a, a summary of what recently happened um, and we see that it's been successfully added. We can also confirm that it's been successfully added by opening up our dependencies. And you see we have this NuGet package with the entity framework listed. And what's listed underneath that are, are uh, the enti this Pomelo to entity framework core MySQL. It has its own set of um, dependencies, which then have their own set of dependencies. So it's a uh, dependency tree there. So anyway, so this is another way that we can confirm that that package has been added. And we could also open up this that csproj file that we talked a little bit about a couple lessons ago, and we can confirm as well here that we have an item for that package. So we know that's available. We can uh, start our application now. We won't actually be able to confirm that our connection has been made, that we've made the, um, the appropriate settings. Um, sorry, just waited for a, a fire truck to go by. So, so we won't be able to um, ensure that we've made, that our connection to our SQL database is active yet um, because we haven't added any data. We haven't, um, we haven't included anything explicitly within the, um, 
to create those those relational objects that we will be doing in, in future videos. But what we can do or what is worth um, testing and running our application now is just to ensure that with those changes that we've made that we haven't completely broken anything. So just to confirm that, you know, our application works as it had before. Um, so really this is like an absence of an error is a confirmation that we're on the right track. Um, so I don't see any errors here, so I think we're in good shape there. One uh, more setup step to go over before we're ready to actually start creating these um, relational objects is to ensure that we have um, the Entity Framework CLI tools. So some users, um, actually I'm just going to open a new terminal window. Um, some users might already have, uh, but you, some Windows users might already have this uh, set of tools available. You can check to see if you have these tools available um, by running the command .net ef, um, and you'll know that you have these uh, items if you see something that looks like this, which is essentially just like a, a command line menu to let me know that, um, that I have some options to run that command. Um, if you if you don't if you test with .NET EF and you don't see something like this, you um, you might need to actually install them. Um, we have that line in the textbook to install these globally. Um, let me find that. So you would run this tab, this uh, command here if you needed to install these tools. Um, I already have them, so if I run this. I just get a message that tells me that they're already installed, um, but make sure that you do install them. And uh, for Windows users, you can again confirm, well, everyone can confirm that they have them installed by running .NET EF again. Um, for Mac users, there's one extra step that we talk about a little bit um, in the textbook just to uh, to make sure that you can, um, can access those tools once they are installed. You just have to make a little change to something called your bash profile. So once those, setups, uh, once those steps are completed, so we have, um, we've created the database, we, we have our SQL Server running, we've made a user associated with that database, we've, um, we've written that connection line within our app settings JSON, We've gotten, we've, we've added the, um, the Pavello Entity Framework Core MySQL into our application, and with that comes um, the Entity Core library itself. And now we have these tools installed on the command line for future commands that we're going to be running. Um, we're all set. So quite a bit of setup, um, but now we're ready to get back into um, writing within our MVC application.